Welcome back to Tony's Ford Life. Uh, just uh, going to get started here uh, with a uh, playthrough of uh, No Question of Surrender. Uh, so we've got our first chit here, which is this division activation chit. It is, as you can see here, uh, the 132 uh, District uh, uh, Ariate. So what we do first, and we're going to go through this for this turn, maybe next turn. Um, just go through this very, I don't want to say slowly, but, you know, methodically going through this. So what we're going to have to do is we have to increase the division's um, command points and dispatch points up to 19 points. So how do we do that? So the new number of command points is a roll once divided by two and round down plus the division's command rating. So, the Ariete division is, uh, let's go to that board so you guys can kind of see uh, what we've got and where everything is at. Uh, okay, so looking at the um, Ariete division, that's the 103, that's the wrong one. Yeah, oh wait, there's a that's not, yeah, so that's that's gonna be that. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um <laughs> so uh what we have here is we have our command is three, our dispatch is two. So to add to our command points, we roll a die. So let me grab a dice here. So we have eight. Then we're going to divide that by two plus the command rating. So we divide it by two is four plus the command rating is three. So in this case, it'll be seven. So we're going to get seven more command points. We're at eight. So we'll go up to 15 command points. Okay. Now, uh, dispatch points. If the result is currently, if the, uh, the new number of roll once and sum up the following. So we're going to roll and go through. So one, if result is less than the current accumulated dispatch points, add one DP. Okay. So it is not less than what we have because we have one dispatch point right now. If the result is less than or equal to the dispatch rating, add a add one well it is equal to or less than if the result is equal zero which it does not add one dp if the result is nine subtract if it's a last turn before night add two okay so we've got our so we basically added only one dispatch point and we have uh but we have 15 command points. And the command points and dispatch points as we place through will come up and you'll see that. So we're back to the map and here's what we are able to do. And let's kind of spread it out so you guys can see a little bit more. With this, we get to activate every unit in that division and have performed any one action except for fire, assault, or move into an enemy firing zone. Uh, so basically we can move and get everybody kind of to the, to where they need to be. So let's take a look. Uh, let's start from, uh, the top of the map and we can go from there. So we're going to go ahead and start from the top here. A little bit closer here. So we move each unit and we can't move into a firing zone. So. Let's go ahead. So on our terrain effects, so we have we have track units. A desert is um, three and two, and our vehicles, if they're in column, are one movement point. Well, we're not going to have too much of a problem with it because. Obviously, so if we pull this unit right here, it is going to be um, 
Uh, if you look here, it's a 20 movement point. So we have 20 movement points to go through this. So I'm going to go ahead and get these all moved and get them in line. And then we will go to that and get that taken care of. And you'll see what happens. Okay, so I got the independents moved. They are moved along down this way. I did uh, flip some of them over from their attack side to kind of like their movement side uh, to get moving because in this case, 18, 18, still the same. Oh, that one didn't change. This one did. This one did, sorry. So this would have a movement point of three and now, or no movement points at all. And this one has 19. So that's why I flipped that one over. So. That's going to go there. And then I have the other ones down here. So in this case, uh, the ones with the black markings here, the black numbers here, they're uh, wheeled units, so it's five movement points. Um, and on the road, the only advantage is if it's one point um, in column is you get the advantage. So these guys aren't in column. I have, uh, you know, five turns, so I don't want to get them too far in there anyways. So that's that. Now, on to the next regiment. The next regiment is going to be the 132nd Regimento Corazatio, which is starting right here. Uh, so they are also, they are mainly mech, mechanized units. So they basically will have close to the same number of movement points. Uh, so we're trying to get them in. They can't go into the enemy fire zone, um, which basically... We're looking at for opportunity fire. Um, the closest anybody can get for opportunity fire wise, I think, is only four. Um, so we're going to get into that and so we'll get close enough on that one. So let me go ahead and get these guys moved in. I have now got these units moved into place. Uh, as you can see, uh, they started in B, they were mech. Uh, so mechanized, it's three units. So basically, they had six hexes. Um, I have kept them to two units uh, per hex instead of uh, the max is four plus a U column unit in column. So the max is four. Um, I'm just going to keep them kind of spread out a little bit right now uh, and then working on that. So uh, the 132nd has been moved. Now we're going to go to the 8th. Uh, the 8th is starting in the C position. Uh, the 8th is going to probably be a mix of different units. Um, which I'm going to have to flip a, quite a few of these units over so they could actually move. Because right now they have that star on there. That star is not uh, is not a good movement value, but if you flip it over, it's got 26. So we're going to go ahead and get these all flipped over and get them moved into space. So with that, I've got these guys all moved into here. Uh, so we have now completed... Um, the first activation chit, and we'll be drawing a second one. We the second activation chit, uh, we're going to go ahead and draw it out of this little cup here. So what's our next activation chit? Our next activation chit is going to be uh, the Italian command order. So uh, we've got that. Let's take a look and see what we can do with that. So, a direct command chit, and in this case, this is the Italian direct command chit. The direct command chit may activate any number of independent IC units, uh, in command units, by spending one CP per unit and having them each perform one non engineering action. Um, they must uh, must spend any CPs from the activating units division and must have any leader stacked with activating units stay stacked with one of them. May not perform, may not have any unit perform a second action. Oh, that's right. I forgot the second action on the first, uh, that one, because you could do a second activation. Uh, but you would be spending CP. So we can go ahead and activate any units. And I have an idea of what we're going to do, I think the 132nd is going to kind of be that Vanguard moving in. So we're going to do some activations on that one. And remember, our current command points are at 15. So every time I use one, I will spend it down and uh, we'll go from there. 
So let's go ahead. I think, like I said, we're going to go into the 132nd and uh, kind of um, get some action started on this. So here we are. We have the 132nd involved here. They are definitely going to be going for an attack over through here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to activate one. Now, if you notice, we do have a little green hex. So that will be a uh, miner, a light mine field. And it basically all it does is um, uh, it could suppress the unit um, as well as it costs uh, extra to go through. But we do have a uh, light minefield and the red one's the heavy minefield. So first command point. So we're now down to 14 command points. And we're going to activate this unit. And he is going to move. So we're going to move into one. Now I know that all of the uh, Anchar um, units here have a range of four. Uh, again, I don't know <laughs> which of these gun units are um, dummies and which of them are units. There's four dummies out of them, dummy counters. Now, since they are in four, one, two, three, four, they are in opportunity fire range. Uh, these two are. So uh, he only moved one, so I can only flip one over, and we'll find out if it is a unit. No, so this one was a dummy counter. So that's uh, that one's done. Four. He is going to move again. This one is going to possibly opportunity fire if it is a unit. And it is. It is the uh, six anti-char. So I'm going to pull up the sixth here. And it's going to go into that spot. Now, um, I can't do an opportunity fire on this one uh, because it is it spent that one to flip into that spot so what we're going to do now is he is going to go into here so this one does not have a range number but it would be range one this has a range oh it was of, is that six let me double check on that okay so that was my mistake this actually has a fire range of six not four, so these guys could have flipped over here uh, when they moved in. I may not have been able to move them that far, but either it's neither here nor there. Uh, we'll just move forward on this. Um, I am still learning the rules, so if you guys notice I do something completely off whack and not appropriate, let me know in the comments uh, so I can get it right. I really do want to learn the system because just a few things I've played with uh, actually have it have been pretty awesome. Now. So, he moved another spot so he can actually opportunity fire, but to opportunity fire, it's not always guaranteed. He has to roll lower than his, uh, is it morale? I think that's what it is. It's morale. Sometimes they're named different. Troop quality. Yep, see, something different, but think of it, troop quality. So, for him to fire onto this unit here, so let's go ahead and uh, get zoomed in on this. Well, first of all, let's see if he can fire first. He rolled a six, so he cannot fire. Okay, now do I want to move into the um, into this one, into this hex right here? Well, I guess I do. I need to roll into it. So here we go. Now he is in a heavy minefield. Entry cost is the same as the desert. It doubled the cost to exit the minefield. Wield and track units roll on attempting to enter the hex. Oh, I got a. If it is equal to or less than the minefield number, which in this case would be a four, uh, the unit becomes suppressed and everything stops. So uh, before I can move into that, so we'll move him back. I have to see if I roll higher than a four. I roll a seven, so I can. So he can move into there. Now, that also does allow this unit here to see if they can op fire. And again, they have to fire two quality or less. And it is a one. No, it's a nine. So he cannot fire. So that one's done, and he is gonna he is gonna stay there. Now just so we know I moved him already because he can't do a second a, a second action. 
he is going to go there. So we're going to move this out of the way here. Now, this guy is going to move, so that's going to be another CP point. So that's down to 13. So he can move. And again, opportunity fire. So it does get a little dice chucky at times, I will say that. But still, it's kind of nice uh, because it doesn't guarantee opportunity fire every time, as you can see. Two, he does get to opportunity fire. So let's go ahead. We're going to center this in, and uh, we're going to go through the possibilities of what can happen. Okay, so let's take a look. So this has a start of a column. Uh, and we're going to use this number here, this 4. So we start off with a 4, and then we have a bunch of modifiers to determine uh, what it is. So uh, in this case, it's opportunity fire. So is it ranged versus armor? Well, yes, we are versus armor. Um, if it is, my, it's minus 1 if it's 2 to 3 hexes. It is currently 1, 2, 3, 4 hexes. So... Uh, it is going to be a minus three, so we're on the one column. Uh, the def uh, range, oh, sorry, versus armored, it is just a minus two because it's not the last. So if it was a six, it would be a minus two, and so this would be a minus one. So it goes from a four, it's now at a three. So let's go ahead, we're gonna. We're going to do it this way to kind of show where we're at here. Um, I'll have it up here in a second. So it's a three right now. Okay, defensive rating minus. So this has a defensive rating of minus one. So this is now down to a two. Uh, is it a mass uh, zero to four steps? Nope. Uh, so it's more than it's only two steps. Uh, unit status, nothing there. Fire zone to non fire zone or fire zone to fire zone. So it's fire zone to fire zone. So it's plus three. So this jumps up to a five because of that. And uh, not running away from a spot. So what I need to do is I need to roll less than a five or less and to see if it hits it's on the five column and so we'll see um, it could lose a spot a step here on a five column so uh, let's uh, gonna back out here so you can see the die roll so I need a five oh crud five or less to hit one so it does hit That figures. Uh, so it does hit. Let's go from there. Okay, so I got. I think I got this. So in this case, um, he had a five. So, and he rolled a one. So it did hit. So in this case, a one uh, loses uh, a step. So he will actually flip over. So he lost a step. That plus three is pretty wicked on those. Uh, on that one against armored so if they can get through they're good now uh, okay oh that one with that um, and give me one more so this one is now all set he did lose a step I mean technically he can go again he can keep going. The only time it actually stops is if they're suppressed. And he's not suppressed. He just lost a step. Uh, let's go ahead. We're going to go in one more step here. He is now going to fire again, or attempt to fire. And I think this is a good spot for this. So he needs a four or less to fire. He got an eight, so he does not fire. And in this case, the uh, this unit is going to stop right here. Oh, shoot, you know what? This guy could not opportunity fire because this guy is adjacent. It cancels out the fire zone. So, all of that for nothing. <laughs> so, um, that has a range of zero. 
let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. But this unit, gun unit right here could possibly, and it's a dummy. Well, that kind of um, takes care of a lot of the dummy units. That's two of the four dummy units. So we have half the dummy units gone now. So, and this, and uh, mortar, mortar cannot opportunity fire. And so, so he can just move right on up here. And actually, yep. So he's going to have to, he wants to go in there. Let's see here. He has to roll a four or less. Um, a roll equal to or less than the minefield number. Okay, four, a five or greater. And he got a two, so he will be suppressed. So he does stop at that case. So he is now suppressed. Okay, uh, next movement point, uh, command point. Uh, let's take uh, this guy here. And so this will be, so it's tracked, so it's three, six, nine, and then he's going to move here. He is also going to try to move into that unit, uh, into that hex there. Uh, he has an eight, so he can move into here. And this guy sees him. He says, hey, let's see if we can outfire. And he cannot. So that's good. Okay, uh, another CP. Here we go. So he's just going to move into here. Again, that only has a range of one. That can op fire. That only has a range of one. Um, oh, there is another gun unit here. Um, I'm going to move the camera down a little bit here. So we have this gun unit right here. Oh, he could have fired, but he is also a dummy. So three of the four dummies are done. <sighs> Which um, does not bode well for the southern, or in this case, what is it? The western flank? No, it is the southern flank. So the southern flank is going to be, have issues. So... Okay, so he's fine there. So this one's going to go one, two, three. He's going to be fine there. One, two, three. Good there. Oh, so that's two more. One, two. Now this guy has a, uh, a range. So when they get activated, he's got a range of 10. So he... But I want to get everybody up in here. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do another command point. We'll take this guy, he's gonna go three, six, nine, and he's gonna go right there. Um, three, six, nine. So that's another command point. So we're down to seven command points, and then yeah, this guy's just gonna go with this guy, and then he's gonna move into there. Okay, so at this point now, can't do second activations, anyways or second actions so i want to save some but I ended up activating that whole regiment uh for that direct command chit okay so let's go ahead and let's pull the next chit okay next chit we've got here is actually the 132nd activation here so that's our next activation chit so we moved them in here so they can all be activated. So now let's take a look real quick just to make sure go over formation. Uh, may activate every unit in that formation and have each perform one action. May have uh, in command unit perform a section action immediately after completing its first by spending one command point and having it perform a non-engineer action of a different type other than the first. So if you assault, you can't assault again. If you move, you can't move again. So there you go. Must have it. any leader stacked with activated units stay with the one that's stacked with. Okay, makes sense. After completing all actions, may transfer any leaders of the formation to any unit in that formation. Remove all barrage markers and any leaders if the entire formation is gone. If it's the last turn of scenario, determine victory. If not, start a new turn. Okay. So what are we gonna do? Well, these this is a single, these are two two units. So what I'm thinking about doing 
is this has a really good fire bonus on it, and this has a plus defense, so that will actually help. So let's go ahead, and we are going to, um, although this isn't a fortified hex, so we're going to go through, and this guy looks like he could cause me problems. Um, he is a mortar. Um, eh, mortars aren't that dangerous. The actual white part up on the top of the unit here, so let's kind of zoom in here again. Let's get in even closer here. Okay, there we go. So the 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 number on the top up here, uh, the white is a dual purpose. Uh, so that will that'll work out with that. So uh, we're gonna take um, the bottom unit here, which is a three, is going to fire attack into here. So it's going to start off with a three. So now this is a direct fire modifier. So um, I can't do a company bonus because I've because uh, of um, actually I need to check that real quick. Range versus armor unarmored in which this is an unarmored unit. Um, so uh, so it's going to be a zero modifier. So it starts off on the three. Um, defensive rating is a plus one, so now it's up to a four, and there's no mass, it's not nice, and there's no other starters on there. Uh, let me check with the company bonus, and I'll be right back. Okay, so to get the company bonus, he would have to pass uh, a troop quality trek, uh, so we're going to try that. So he needs a five um, uh, troop quality trek. Uh, less five or less and he got a five so he does get that so he will be on the six so he needs six or less to hit and he does hit so a six would be an eliminate for dual purpose so um, and I think that actually eliminates that altogether. So I did that other opportunity fire slightly wrong anyways. But uh, so this is a three, a three on a, it would be a C, which is a cohesion loss. So I need to get a cohesion, cohesion hit on this guy here. Because what it is, is so I hit, and when I hit, there we go, so he's got a cohesion hit on him. So when I hit, and I'm going to show you very carefully the columns here. So uh, let's, yeah, there we go. So with this, so he needed a six or less to hit, so he hit, and then that three, we go to that column, and then what type of it is? It's color-coded, so that would be C. So that's a cohesion hit. So he now has a cohesion hit on him. And if you notice, what that does is that changes it. So the column modifier is now a minus one, and the assault is a minus one. So he has an assault rating of zero, and a mortar fire of three of two now so he's done and then he is just going to go that way just so i know it this guy right here is also going to fire on that one so everything's the same we do have to roll for the um Qua troop uh, company bonus. Now, here's the thing about the company. I could spend a command point and automatically pass it. I'm not going to. I'm going to roll it because I want to save my command points. So I got a nine, so I did not pass that one. So in this case, I will need a four or less to hit. And I rolled a nine, so that's a no hit. So he's also done. So he's done as well. Now, what this guy is going to do, he is going to try to go into here. Oh, fortified. Oh, I totally forgot to look for fortified. Uh, we'll have to see here. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this again. 
And we're going to go with what I rolled and see how it works out. So these are guys are actually considered, because they are in a fortified X, they are considered armor. Um, so that doesn't change that. So versus unarmored armor, that doesn't change that. The defensive rating is a, is it minus two here? Um, defensive rate are lowered by two, so it would be a minus one. So in this case, it's minus one. So it goes from a three. That one passed. So that was up to five. So it's down to a four. And that, that'll be it. Okay, so that'll be a four. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So that'd be four. I still hit. It's still uh, cohesion, but I did. Uh, luckily, I hit low enough. The other one didn't hit at all, so it won't even matter. So. Okay, so we are going to try to take this unit and move it into here. So in this case, we are going to move in. We need a four or a five or greater, and a seven, so he can move in to here. Now, this guy has a range of one, and he can opportunity fire into that hex. So... He's gonna, he can opportunity fire, or try to opportunity fire into that hex. Uh, he's small arm, so he's like right there. Uh, so it might be a little difficult. So he has a, a troop quality of five. He needs to pass that, and he does not. So he does not get to fire. Now, this guy, it would cost a ten to leave. He spent five getting into it. So he is going to go uh, into and actually do an assault into this unit right here. So we're going to use... The assault ratings instead and we'll see how that works out it may be good it may not be good so let's go ahead and do the assault and go through that okay so let's go through so start assault process does it need to perform a bravery check yes because it is assaulting uh, for each assaulting unit modified by the defense ratings of the armored units so uh, because they are entrenched and they are considered armor, so gets a minus two, so uh, six. He does not pass. Uh, that ends the assault, because he actually has to. So he cannot actually go into that assault. That ends it, and that ends his activation. Now, oh, wait a second. He can't. Give me a second. I'm still, I get so excited. He couldn't even do an assault into here, uh, because... Um, <laughs> uh, because you, that's a separate action. So now I could do the separate action. So we're going to do that because I did go through all that. So the assault would have been a second activation. It didn't work. So that's that. So now we're going to take this guy here. He's going to try to move into here. Again, one or less. So he is suppressed. So let me get a suppressed marker out for him. Rest marker out for him. Okay. Now, the top guy is going to try to get in there as well. Seven, he can move into here. And now he is going to try to assault as well as a second activation. Second one, so that's my second CP. Okay, here we go. I think that's all the Italian chits I have. I may have one other, so this will be fine. So he is going to try to pass that. Uh, a zero is a pass. So yes, he did pass a troop quality check. Yeah, so defender's opportunity fire. So he can opportunity fire here. So he has a five, starts on a, starts with a five, uh, small arms. Um, so this will be opportunity fire. So uh, range versus armored, which he is armored, will be one hex. Defensive rating, it's a minus one, so he's going to go down to a four. Not mass steps, miss, nope. Fire zone to fire zone, so that's three. So that point brings it up to an eight. So <laughs> he needs an eight to hit. He gets a six, and a six on a 
Small Arms is a cohesion check. So that still means he can go. A suppress would stop it. Okay. Uh, first, um, so uh, assaulting unit uh, suppressed. Nope. So start the first round of assault. Eliminate zero step units defending. Um, there are none. Okay. Do they decide to run away or stand? Uh, the defenders are going to stand. Assaulters charge or fire? Um, we're going to charge. So we're going to try quality check for this, which is a five. So we're going to try to... And we pass that. The defender performs a, a TQ check uh, with any unit, so he has a five as well. So that's a nine, so he did not pass. Uh, no, uh, defender runs away. Okay, move defenders to an adjacent hex. Eliminate immobile, which he is mobile. And suppressed units. Okay, so he has to move one hex. So he is going to move one hex back here. Still in the fort. Obviously, we want to go into that one. Okay, possible opportunity fire. Uh, yes, because he has a range of three. So he can opportunity fire. So let's go through that. There are a lot of steps to these assaults, but it's a nice flow chart and it goes really smoothly once you, so you just do this. Okay. So he's going to opportunity fire. So he starts with a three. Um, it's against, uh, so it would be armored. Uh, so it is one hex or minus one so it's down to a two um, defense rating is a zero so that doesn't change anything um, uh, fire zone to fire zone which it is so that's a three so it's a five so five or less hits it is a five so it does hit a five and he's a white so he'll actually take a hit Oh, wait, the def uh, hold on. So, because he's in that hex, he actually has a minus two. Um, so, it would have to be a three or less to hit because the defensive rating. So, that is not a hit. So, so no hit, no there. Um, units that run away become suppressed. So, he will become suppressed. Let me grab another suppress marker out here. So he is now suppressed, which is a good thing. Uh, move assaulting unit into the assaulted hex. So he moves into there, which is cool. And that ends the assault. So did he, he didn't take a hit, did he? Nope, he did not take a hit. Yep, so he just ran away. Okay. So we're good to go there. Now, this suppressed unit, so, um, so now we're going to go to the activated for this suppressed unit here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to rally right here, uh, to attempt to rally, because these guys are already, or this guy got suppressed here, this guy on this action. So this one was suppressed last action when it moved into that minefield. It needs a four or less to pass, and it gets a six. So it does not pass. So we are good to go. As long as it's not a nine. <laughs> okay, so I've got three more units here. Just trying to figure out how I want to get into it here. So, hmm. I think what I may do is maybe I'll fire on, because he has a range of three, he can fire on this one. So yeah, let's go ahead, we're gonna do a direct fire. And this time I'm gonna, there's a flow chart for that. <laughs> so let's let's go through the flow chart for 
the um, direct fire. Okay. Uh, begin direct fire. Can you direct fire? Yes, he can. Is it in range? Range is three. One, two, three. Yes, it is in range. Is there a line of sight? Yes. More than one and a hex? No. And now we need to modify the rating. So uh, he has a zero, which is a two defensive. So this is direct fire. Company bonus. Let's go ahead and see if we can pass the company bonus. He gets a two. So yes, he can. He does pass the company bonus. So starts at a three, goes up to five. Uh, ranged versus, he, it is considered armored. Uh, so that would be minus one. So it's down to a four. Uh, defensive rating Maya is down to a two, which is a nine. Or, sorry, which is now a two. <laughs> um, nah, nothing else. So two. So we got to roll. So I got to do a two or less. Um, uh, to hit. Oh, I did score a one. Holy cow. Now, a one on a white is a suppression. So this guy is now suppressed, which is awesome. Well, this guy is now suppressed. Um, I am going to do a second action. Um, so that's going to drop my command point down to four. Uh, and he's going to move into this hex here, or try to at least. So, um, a light one. So, um, he's trying to move in. Okay, so first of all, he's trying to move in. Basically, not a zero or a one. He rolled a five. So, he can move into here. And a uh, light costs the same as a double as a desert. Double the cost to exit the minefield. Okay, so... It doesn't matter. So he can do that. So to move into there is um, three. And now he wants to move out. So that'll be six. Right? Yeah, six. So three, six. That's nine. But we got to check to see if he gets uh, done. A zero. So no, he becomes suppressed as well. Dang it. Ah. <sighs> These stupid little things. Okay, so this guy, I'm going to have him go around here, I think. Yeah. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so he's going to go here, here, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, um... Yeah, we're going to get in here. Okay, so... Um, yeah, uh, so he's going to go here. So we're going to roll uh, four so he does get suppressed uh, before he moves in there. Boy, these minefields are killing me, which is, uh, I think, the idea of minefields anyways. So, there we go. Okay, and so now we're going to take this guy, and we're going to go three, six. Um, I have to take a look at something real quick. Okay, so this guy is not there, so he's going to go into, so he's, um, yeah, so he's going to go here. And then he's going to try to go into there, and we'll see if he's suppressed. Three. He is suppressed. So. And then he's going to be with them. Okay. Okay. So that completes the activation of <laughs> of that regiment. So yeah, that's that. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Let's go ahead and we're gonna look for another another jet.
Okay, so uh, another chit. So in this case, we are going. We have the French are going to activate their division. So the first thing we need to do is roll four um, command points. Their command rating is five, which is really good. Which would make sense. They're all in a central area. So the command rating is five. So we roll. So two divided by two is one plus five is six so one two three four five six so that gives 10 command points and dispatch points i don't think we need to worry about that um but i will because i think you can switch dispatch points for command points if i remember right so dispatch is a two anyway, we roll um so that's a seven so uh where's that little chart at here Okay. Uh, oh, here we go. Dispatch points. Um, so, is it uh, current less than current? Yes, add one dispatch point. Yes, so we are up to one dispatch point. Is it less than or equal dispatch? Yep, so we get another dispatch point. And if it's a zero, add one. If it's a nine, subtract two. And so he got two dispatch points. Uh oh, so we got two dispatch points. Now he can activate anybody in the units, um, except for they can't fire or move into a fire range or assault. Right? Uh, is it fire? Is that what it is? Fire, assault, or move into. So there's not much we can do. Um, I'm guessing we could, um, move some of these guys in, into this area here, because, um, he may wait, though, because he's, he's not sure if these guys will make an end around up he through here. Although, there is a huge minefield here, so, in this case, this, this whole area right here where the, um, dice tower is, that's all minefield. So that's actually not a good idea, I don't think. So, dang it. Um, so I don't think we'll do that. Um, so he's going to take these guys here, and we're going to, um, since you can activate him, um, <laughs> their range is like three. Um, so he they can definitely move. Um, and in... Uh, they're leg units anyways. Yep, they're all leg units. So they are, uh, so that's two, and then they can have movement of six. So uh, two, four, six. Uh, two, four, six. Uh, let's see here. One, two, three. Yep, so they're not in fire range. This guy is going to move over here. This guy is not going to move, but, and, um, okay, so they can't move. These anti-groups can't move at all. Well, that kind of sucks. Okay. So, but he will pay a CP, um, because he has a range of six, one, two, three, four, five. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and... He can see him too, so that'll be direct mortar fire. So, direct mortar fire. So, he's going to pay one command point and he's going to try to mortar um, uh, the top unit here. So We'll start off here. Uh, again, direct fire. Can he direct fire? Yes, he can direct fire. Uh, is he with range? Yes, is there line of sight? Yep. Okay. Uh, select a single unit. So we're going to select the top unit because it's it is. Now we're going to have to modify the rating. Okay. So he starts off with a three. Uh, company bonus. Uh, we're going to try four. He needs a three or less. So three or less. And he gets an 8. So he does not get the company bonus. Uh, it is armored. 
So it is minus one. So that makes it a two. Defense uh, minus one. So it's not a one. And that's it. So one or zero hits. And it's a three. So, yep, nope. No hit. So that's, he's safe. So, eh, that might have been not as good. Um, so the guys to the south here, they're not going to move. Um, yeah, he's not going to move. Uh, so, uh, but he can, we can do a command point for an indirect fire. Um, it could be interesting. Okay. Uh, let me take a look at something. So what I was looking at is, is if I could get in, so if I could use this guy to get in here, Max, um, no, here, let me show you to get in towards these guys right here max line of sight during the day is eight all of these are these are all eight away uh so i can't use them as indirect and in, uh for that one for sure um uh but this one i could use to go after this stack right here as it's one two three four five and that's direct line of sight so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to spend a command point, and we are going to fire this guy right here. So another command point gone. Now, uh, self-spotting, yes. In contact, yes. Uh, yes. Lose contact. Okay, so it's self-spotting, yes. In contact, yes. Loose contact. Uh, modify fire rating and select target row. Okay. Okay, so in this case, the fire rating is 4 on the orange, which is the indirect HE. Okay. Uh, okay. We're going to keep going. With. So, direct and intake. So, true quality. He has a three, and we're going to see what we can do with that. That is a six. So he does not get true quality uh, versus ranged armored. So it would be minus one. So that drops it down to a three. He has a defense, uh, defense of um, one, right? Yeah, defense of minus one. Okay, so that drops it down to a two. Um, uh, it doesn't have more steps. Oh, it's got, it's got four steps. Yeah, it's still fine. Um, yeah, so, uh, and unfortunately this is range and it is, what is it? Yep. Uh, range and assault modifiers. Yeah, okay. Oh, indirect fire does not use the range modifier. Okay, so yeah, that's fine then. Um, because the range, oh, the range would be minus one. So it's actually on a three. So three or less hits. Ah, got a three. Okay. Did you roll a nine? No. I did not roll a nine. Result equals zero or less than the equal. Yes. Apply the targeted result. So three on a three is a suppressed question mark possible suppression okay so the possible suppression so i think with possible suppression you do a true quality check which in this case uh, we're just doing the top unit by the way because they're all suppressed already um is five four so i need four less got a five so that means the bottom one is still singly suppressed wow Ooh. Second suppression. I'm going to have to take a look at that real quick. Okay, so with another suppressed, um, it becomes actually a cohesion and a suppression. So, yeah, this is not a good situation for this, this little stack right here. Um, we'll have to do some rallying, or hopefully do some rallying with this, with this unit. So, 
what we're going to do is we're going to put this cohesion check on here and then this guy goes back up here um, then we'll put the little suppression marker here and we'll do that there okay oh well that was that okay so i think we'll hold off on the command points right now because i don't see much and i may need uh, to do more firing and stuff like that later on so i kind of want to save some uh some so drawing this uh we only got well this will be the last chit and it is going to be oh my artillery park uh for the uh uh yeah for that one so there's one chit left it will be the first chit of the next turn and that is the uh french command chit so we're going to put that here and then so what we're going to do, we're going to do some bombarding here uh, from the artillery park. Um, so the artillery park can see everything. Um, so with that, they have a line of sight to everything, um, which is pretty good. Okay, so um, let's uh, let me uh, kind of show you uh of what we've got going on in the artillery park so in the artillery park we have four u four um units here that we can fire with we have two fives and two fours so what we're going to do is i think we're going to go ahead and try to get rid of um some of their artillery so uh we'll see uh, hopefully we'll be able to pick it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, the each unit I'm going to pull from the artillery park and put it to where I'm going to fire it on the map. So you guys know which ones are which, and I will then put it in a different spot. So, uh, let's go back to the map and figure out what we're going to do. Okay. So let's get some indirect firing done from the artillery parks. So let's start with this, uh, unit here. So he is now, he is going to try to take out, yep, this unit right here. So that's what we're going to do. So starting out, so he has a five indirect HE. Um, true quality, uh, that's a three. So you know what? I'm going to move this over here. There we go. And he does get the true quality. So... Um, ranges don't matter for indirect fire. Okay, so true quality, so he's got a plus two, so that's up to a seven, right? Yep, a five, six, seven. Defensive rating is zero, so that's seven, because that's two less than this one, which is a two. Uh, so we're still on seven. Uh, mass, nope, night stand, nope, 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 nope. So here we go. So I need a seven or less to hit. I get a nine. Nine is an automatic miss. So he has fired here. Choo! Okay, now let's pull up this one right here. So, uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's get rid of. See if we, well, you know what? Let's see if we can get rid of some of these other units. So let's see if we can get rid of this mortar fire unit right here. So that one. Okay, so indirect. So same thing. He's got a four. He starts off with a four. Uh, three or less. Oh, he gets a three. So he does get the plus two. So it's up to a five. Um, uh, it will be down to a four because that's two better. Uh, so that's minus one. So he's down to a four. So I need four less to hit. And I do hit a four. Uh, is a possible suppression. So let's see if we can get that guy suppressed. Four or less. He has a six. So he is suppressed because he does not pass the true quality. So he is now suppressed. That was very, very successful on that one. Okay. Um, any other ones with some serious? Oh, yep. Let's go after this other mortar right here. See if we can suppress it. So, uh, self-spotting again. So, troop quality. 
Uh, six nine does not pass the troop quality uh, for the company bonus. The range doesn't matter. Uh, it is a plus one, so it's minus one. So we're down to a three. So three or less hits. He does get a three. Uh, possible suppression. Again, it is troop quality is three. Three. So he does pass. So this one is now done. And then our final one here, which is a five. Uh, let's go ahead and go after it. Uh, let's go after the... Let's go after the mortar on the northern units up here. I know I should probably stick with the same units, but you know we're going to see. So he is going to go there uh, for this one. So let's I'll put this up here. So troop quality three or less. He does not get the troop quality bonus. So it's five, and then that mortar is a plus. So it's minus. So he's rolling on four. So four or less hits. And we get a seven, so does not hit. So he is now safe. Okay. So that's it for that, and that's it for the first turn. Hey. All right. So turn is over with. Um, uh, the uh, minefields did their job in suppressing a lot of the one thirty second. And I do have my independent brigades as well as the eighth. Uh, moving on in. Uh, so that is that. And that is actually the end of the turn. Uh, so uh, we will uh, move on to the next turn soon. So let's kind of back up and take a look at where we're at. Um, so we have our 8th moving in here. We have our independence moving here. We have our first real contact into here uh, with the 132nd. Um, the artillery park. Yeah, suppressed one unit, and that was it. So, now that was a mortar, so that's kind of nice. So, that's taken care of. So, with that, um, we are all good. Uh, if I did anything wrong, uh, please let me know. Uh, I'm still learning the game, as you have found. Uh, I had to reverse a few things in the middle of uh, of the idea. So, of the play. So, if you have anything, any comments, questions, uh, things you think I should be doing better... Uh, that I could be doing better, let me know. Please do. Construction feed, constructive feed criticism is always welcome. And with that, I, everybody, have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye.